Okay, well, thank you so much um, for coming back. I know we're getting towards the end of the day, but I gotta say, I am super, super pumped about this session. Um, there was a little bit of a, a change of plans. Um, this is actually now partnering with Meta to create VR educational experiences. And the reason I'm so pumped about this is, uh, my name is Sarah Porter, I'm with Hope for Haiti, Director of Innovative Philanthropy, and we are one of the very few nonprofits that are here at this conference. So we're an NGO, we focus on poverty alleviation in the south of Haiti through education, healthcare, clean water, and economic development. Uh, most of our team is Haitian from the local community, and we recently partnered with a VR studio to actually recreate one of our partner schools in rural Haiti um, through a VR experience. So what I love about it is when you put on the headset and you drop into the school, you can walk around the classrooms, it's very interactive, and it just gives us a new way to raise awareness about Haiti and educate people about Haiti. So anytime I hear about VR being used for education, for learning, for social impact, I am just pumped. So we have two amazing speakers today. We've got Christian Rowe with Immerse and Letitia Horigi with Meta. So let's keep the energy going. I've been hearing a lot of applause on that side of the room. <laughs> so let's make sure to give them both a big round of applause for joining us today. <laughs> All right, and with that, I'm gonna kick it off to you. Thank you. And can't wait to hear your presentation. Thank you, Sarah. Christian, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. I know it's probably been a, a longer day, but appreciate your time uh, and attention. My name is Christian Rowe. I am one of the co-founders and chief growth officer at Immerse, and we created an immersive language learning platform. Uh, and excited to share more of those details with you and how we've co-created and grown our product and community in partnership with Meta. Thank you, Christian. And I'm Leticia Jauregui. I am the head of global partnerships in education and immersive learning at Meta. And at Meta, we're very excited about the opportunities within that uh, immersive learning space and how XR technologies can really transform learning. They can transform training in, in professional settings. They can really uh, change the way we engage with education as a whole. And um, we hope that these technologies are going to make education more interactive, yep. that uh, partners like Immerse get to grow uh, in that training and that learning. And we believe that learning is an inherently social activity. And there's a really interesting study that was published in 2022 by the Science of Learning Journal that shows that students who learned language in VR that simulated real environment improved their one-week retention by 92% vis-a-vis students who learned on desktop. And so that's why I'm so excited for you to learn about Immerse and what Christian is doing. And so would you want to share kind of where you're, where you're at with Immerse? Yeah, sure. So if you haven't heard about our, our company, one uh, quick kind of level set of context is uh, this isn't a conversation just in theory or learning in concept. Uh, Immerse started uh, over five years ago, and we started in the B2B space, and we have uh, since grown our community uh, building our direct-to-consumer uh, immersive language learning platform. So we've been, we've been in the trenches through the highs and the lows over the past five years. Uh, I'm really, really proud of, of our team. Over the past, uh, we launched in June of this last year with Spanish classes. And our, our platform is unique that it isn't uh, like Duolingo, where it's just asynchronous, uh, completing certain activities, but it is live, it is social. And I'll explain uh, why in just a, a minute here. But we pair live instructors with real human beings who are learning a language in this global social world uh, to be able to learn the language together. And so since we launched, uh, we have also launched French classes. We just launched English classes uh, in the US, Mexico, and Japan, uh, as well as we just uh, expanded to desktop. So you could learn on a MetaQuest 2 headset as well as on a Mac or PC. That's in partnership with NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been in the news a lot the past few days with some of their work, so we're excited to partnership with them. Uh, so maybe one other note that I'm, I'm really proud of, in the midst of, I know, a lot of hardships and and layoffs in tech, uh, we have been really fortunate to be supported by social impact investors who care about the impact of our business as well as the, uh, the, the revenue that we grow. Uh, 
And that has enabled us to be able to, to grow from what was 30 or so employees to now over 40 employees just in the past six months. So uh, we're moving, we're growing, and we're learning. Thank you, and I think to Sarah's point, it's very exciting to see how educational use cases can really span kind of the whole breadth of nonprofit all the way to for-profit uh, models, really engage with any kind of student in yeah. any type of educational setting, be it formal, structured, unstructured learning. Yep. Um, and according to the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, community is one of the five core components that drives successful language learning. Mm -hmm. And as you were mentioning, Immerse is really focused on helping members create a thriving community of learners, sharing yeah. kind of this passion live, and being able to learn in these real life settings. Yeah. Um, and what you're seeing kind of on the screen is just a loop of some of those uh, experiences in, within Immerse on the app. Yeah. Um, could you share a little bit more about kind of the superpowers of VR and XR and how they unlock these abilities to learn. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really important uh, to note is that when Immerse started, uh, we didn't start in web or with textbooks or 2D experience and tried to kind of copy and paste it into a virtual reality experience. We started in VR. We started in this XR space. And so it, it, we have always taken into account uh, live social interactions, spatialized audio, 3D design and lighting inside of our scenes, and all the things that people might not think about when they're just creating for an asynchronous 2D application. So we started there because we knew that virtual reality and, and XR technology was going to unlock the ability to accelerate and be able to improve learning outcomes if we started there and since we have scaled our 3D kind of virtual world on desktop as well. Um, I am not the learning expert at our company. Um, uh, we have some brilliant uh, minds on our education team and research team at our company. I am a student, if you will, of, of my colleagues. Uh, but as I have learned building this product and seeing it firsthand and taking classes myself, I'm currently taking immersed Spanish classes, um, is that there's really three key types of learning engagement that is critical to learning success that before VR, we weren't able to bring together. And those three, if you're an educator in the space, uh, is behavioral learning engagement, social emotional learning engagement, and cognitive learning engagement. And those words are, you know, before I've heard them before, my wife is even a middle school teacher, so I'd heard them occasionally, but in layman's terms for simpletons like me, that what's really powerful is that for behavioral learning, it was we need to understand how active uh, learners are in the process. And for at Immerse, we support this by offering 30-minute daily classes that people can take in uh, live group sessions, uh, as well as continued learning activities peer-to-peer -peer after the class to continue to hone in these communicative tasks and skills that we're teaching our students. The second one, which is the huge gap in what VR finally unlocks, is <laughs> social-emotional learning. And the reason why this is a huge gap is social emotional learning really, uh, that type of learning engagement measures the level to which someone is willing to take a risk, willing to be vulnerable, willing to put themselves out there inside of this space in, in this learning experience, the level to which that they're enjoying the experience and the level to which they feel like they belong to a community. If you think of Duolingo or other asynchronous apps, that piece is hugely missing. You're by yourself and isolated. And virtual reality, the social immersive learning, unlocks the ability for that belonging, that enjoyment, uh, and that willingness to take risks. And the last one is cognitive, which is just the ability to understand uh, a learner's engagement with actual communic communicative skills and tasks and being able to see their progress from the start to finish. And so in virtual reality, we have really unique opportunity to create this 3D visual space where we, we call it our learning journey, where learners are able to take a self-assessment and understand where they're at. Can I describe something in Spanish at an intermediate level? Can I, if I'm a French learner, am I able to describe something or invite someone to do something, those skills that you might be learning? Self-assessment to understand where I'm actually at and then see my skills measured and metric inside of this virtual world, which motivates them to keep on coming. So virtual reality really uniquely allows us to bring all three of those types of learning engagement together in one space that before wasn't possible. And it's been really, really powerful for our learners and our members. 
Amazing, and I've learned languages in the past, and if you don't practice in the, in the country or in the setting. Yeah, you're the expert. You, you lose. <laughs> yeah. You lose practice, you lose the language, you really For don't sure. ever learn yeah. how to engage, how to communicate. It can be kind of business uh, type of proficiency or personal proficiency or yeah. travel proficiency. So for me, that's something that's really exciting. And you mentioned that it's been five years yeah. and it's still early for the industry, but we're already seeing how transformative it, yeah. these technologies can be in education, yeah. in how we learn, how we train, how we connect. Yeah. Um, what are the key kind of challenges and opportunities that you're seeing? Because obviously there's things that are already working, but there's a lot of things that we still need to fix. For sure. Uh, there's a lot of areas that yeah. we need to exploit. So where are you at and what are the things that excite you and terrify you? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, quick raise of hands. Has anyone learned a new language, speaks a new language, learning a new language? Yes, okay, sweet. Um, something that language learning companies, I, don't, I think as an industry, we haven't done well is be able to say, do you experience FLA, which is called foreign language anxiety? Does anyone like feel like this is really hard to learn a language and you feel like you don't want to sound like an idiot when you say something? Or you, you have, you're, you're, all of you, you guys are people. You have a personality. You have uh, an identity that you get to express. And so often when you're learning another language, you feel like you go back to toddler and you're like, please, yes, okay, bathroom. And like, you just can't really fully engage and express who you are and be part of the conversation. So as a starting point, we're really trying to do a better job and I'm our sales and marketing guy, so I'm always trying to refine this process. But to be able to own it, to be able to say, foreign language anxiety is real. This is so hard to learn another language. But if you could, for a moment, set aside your skepticism of can you really learn a language inside of a virtual reality space? and be able to understand and take a moment to see how we've laid out the whole learning journey and all of the instructor-led classes and the peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences in our world, that that can help you get you to where you're going. And it, before we used to say, just come on, it's free, experience our world, and there's this cool feature and this cool feature, just come on in. And then we try to kind of convert them when they're inside the space, and we realized we, were, we just weren't doing um, our storytelling justice of really empathizing with our users of where they are and where we're going. So that's something we're always trying to improve is just to own the hardness, <laughs> the difficulty of, of the space, which is, which is difficult. But I think a lot of people go, okay, they're willing to have this hard conversation, but be our guide to help us go from where we are to where we're going. Um, the other thing that is why it's both like the hardest part of, of language, but it's also the thing that gets our entire team most excited is what's interesting about language learning is that it's a means to an end, right? So I think there's some people who want to learn a language just to keep their brain working and, and growing, but I'd say for the majority, learning a language is people are motivated to do that because they want to feel a sense of belonging, to be part of a conversation fully that they currently aren't part of. Right? To be able to crack the joke to your mother-in-law that speaks another language. To be able to be with a colleague in our international tech space. We're, talk we're talking about XR technology. To be able to communicate with human beings across cultures and languages is really hard. And people want a sense of belonging to fully express who they are. And so um, something that I've been, I'm really proud of our, space, of, our, of our virtual world is it's given people a space to feel like they belong and to feel like they have somewhere uh, to be and they can fully express themselves with our avatars, with our classes. But we're always working to improve, improve that as well. The other one, which was really hard at first, but again, it's kind of the pendulum has swung and it's become really exciting, is price. We are a for-profit business. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how to continually grow. And we were at like a $100 price point uh, for unlimited classes per month. But as we have grown, we tried for so long not to be like Duolingo, where it was asynchronous, and we said, it's only going to be live, instructor-led, virtual reality classes, 100 bucks a month, like the pendulum swung the whole, if it's not Duolingo, it's the other side <laughs> of the spectrum. But we've realized that it's actually somewhere probably in the middle, that if we have live instructor-led classes blended with peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences where you can jump into the world in the morning, in the evening, whenever you want, and engage with people and express in yourself in, in the foreign language, uh, that that's really important too. And because that blended learning experience is evolving in our platform, it, it helps us to not be pigeonholed to the traditional like private tutoring business model. You know, where it's like, okay, I'm a teacher and it's just get butts in seats and how many people can we get in here? It's kind of like a movie theater business model. It's pretty outdated. Mm -hmm. And so we've been able to actually, we're driving our price down, making it more affordable. And if you go to immerse.com, we're sharing more of uh, our exciting new pricing uh, updates coming soon. So. 
we're working, we're in the trenches, we're trying to make it more accessible, more motivating, and uh, more effective than other language learning solutions that are out there. Thank you, and I think that's part of what's exciting and daunting about this space, is just there's so many it's both. things. It's both. It's the technology, <laughs> it's the monetization, it's the, yeah, the business model. Yeah, you gotta model. think about it all. Yeah, acquisition, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I definitely hope you have Portuguese soon, because I have a lot of colleagues in Brazil. Okay, good to and know. I can understand 100%, and I really do not speak. My anxiety levels go to yeah, 100, and I'm like mute. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, so yeah. that will be exciting. Yeah. And at Meta, we're firmly convinced that no one can build this alone. Yeah. Uh, we have an incredible set of partners, including Immerse. We're collaborating in every stage and every facet of the sector yeah. around immersive learning yeah. with companies, with creators, with policymakers, with researchers. Yep. Um, could you talk a little bit about who you're partnering with and what's coming in terms of new and exciting partnerships. Yeah, that was a T-ball set up to say Meta has empowered us so much uh, to grow inside of the Meta ecosystem on their platform, um, which has been amazing. We also received a research grant from Meta to be able to uh, conduct research on foreign language anxiety and understanding how virtual reality helps reduce that in live language classes inside of Immerse. Um, so thank you <laughs> no. uh, for how we've been able to grow in that space. But also, uh, our core business is targeted to the direct-to-consumer adult, the young adult or the adult who is learning, which is more niche, right? And there, I know there's probably a lot of people here and uh, here there at the conference that when they think about language learning, they might think about K through 12, they might think about international business, and we want to be part of that, those learnings, right? I mean, we have, we're a startup, so we have to focus our resources, but through partnerships, we can continue to test, iterate, and learn. Uh, so what we're really excited to, to announce is that on Meta's platform, we are now live in multiple countries, in Mexico and in Europe and in Japan, which is huge. Uh, we have classes happening right now uh, with members in those countries. But also we have, um, there's two big press an announcements happening in the next few months. I encourage you to follow along. We have a go-to-market partner in Japan with the number one education company in Japan who's helping us through this, uh, it's called a stipend model uh, in Japan. It's very, very frequent that, that people uh, will go pay for a resource and they get reimbursed through their company who's supporting them learning. That's very unique compared to America. So part of my job is I get to figure out the differences in cultures and uh, international. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so we're working with the partner there that we'll announce soon. And then we also have another Meta partner. We kind of have a triage with Meta uh, and a K through 12 partner in Europe who is launching uh, powered by Immerse uh, classes for middle school and high school students uh, throughout uh, Western Europe uh, this summer. So we're excited to be learning. We're doing research on all of it, and we'll have, we have studies coming out soon. But we absolutely can't do it alone. And just a big shout out to anyone in Immerse who's watching this. We have researchers and educators and curriculum writers and VR engineers and 3D designers, plus with Meta, plus our go-to-market partners. I mean, it takes, it takes a tribe. And so we're really grateful for, for who's been riding with us on the journey. We are very grateful and very honored. And we have a few minutes left. I have more questions. But if anyone in the audience uh, wants to ask a question, and there's one there, uh, there's a microphone here. No foreign language anxiety. Just say it boldly <laughs> in the mic. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Um, yeah. I'm a grad student right now, and so my instruction is online. Okay. So I, I buy your contention about the importance of social learning experiences. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm wondering, though, if you're doing anything to help people train with the same people throughout their learning experience. So it's one thing to sort of have a social learning experience with people maybe that come in and out differently depending on their schedules. But do you do anything to, like, cohortize the language learning so that you're learning with the same people weekly or anything Yeah, like that? that's a Yeah, that's a great question. Super important to that community and, and sense of belonging. So. Uh, this isn't live on our platform now, but it's in it's uh, rolling out this summer. So we found that it's really, really important for learners uh, to be able to learn alongside people who are at the same fluency level, learning the same language, who have the same end goal in mind, the same interest, whether it's for travel or for business or for uh, hobbies. Like you like basketball, I do too, and you're learning Spanish and you're intermediate. Let's hang. Let's like learn. Like let's kind of create this micro community inside of this grand community, and create uh, what. It's calling, it is called a social kind of presence system. And so the ability from a wristwatch inside of your, on your avatar to be able to see your friend who's part of that community and go meet up right away, or to go join that class, see them like John is inside of this class, or Sarah just, she's in the commons, 
uh, in this peer-to-peer -peer space hanging out when you go meet, meet her right now and you click this and you go jump right to where she's at. And so the goal is to not have people kind of to continue to take classes with strangers, though it's really exciting to meet new people. That's part of the benefit is connecting with the rest of the world. But it's really important to connect with people that are like-minded and to feel like you're not alone. And so it's super important. So Thank you. we're working on it. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And if you want to ask both questions, I can make sure to write them down, and that way we can cover both questions. So, oh, there's someone behind you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't remember what his question was exactly. <laughs> no, your, um, your question. Uh, so are you taking advantage of the physical aspect of this, and you're like saying, okay, so today we're going to learn about like eating habits that are culturally appropriate in countries that do this, yep. or how far away you should stand away from somebody, again, because of cultural differences. Like, are those things also something that you teach? Yeah. Uh, or is it just language? No, absolutely. I mean, cult culture is part. So I'll, sorry, I'll just yes. repeat the question yeah, for the go. recording. But so are you taking advantage of those physical aspects and the cultural nuances in language learning for yeah. those languages? Yeah. I think, as we all know, part of language learning and communication is nonverbal. Right? So you don't, when you're just memorizing phrases and vocabulary on an app, you like miss the practice of the application, the use of that language inside of the real life settings that you would use it. And part of the benefit of virtual reality and what is unlocked for us is this physical embodied learning experience. It, what you're seeing here is live avatars inside of a world and with your controllers, I'm literally grabbing the smoothie and I'm chopping up the vegetables and putting it in the blender and making something and I can pour it and it fills up in the glass and I can give it to you. And your avatar can take it and you can drink the smoothie and we can talk about the smoothie that we just had together and man, summer's going great, isn't it? You can have a conversation. <laughs> And that's more casual, but we also can reenact an unlimited number of scenarios. We have over 40 scenes or virtual scenes inside of our world, so we do have the more professional office. We also have the home. We also have some fantastical spaces, like a, a wizard, kind of Harry Potter style space, where you're still learning actual outcomes, but we also can have fun with it too. It's part of the benefit of virtual reality. So you can use a wand and shoot a bow and arrow and still uh, focus on developing real life outcomes. Um, so that, that's what we have currently right now. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm, Hi. I'm so curious because this is a collaboration with Meta. Yeah. Uh, I, I know Meta has a ton of expertise in language translation and language technologies. And yeah. I'm, I'm curious if you leverage that in some way. So uh, the question is if You're Meta has <laughs> <laughs> contributed on the kind of language uh, teaching and learning and models expertise. Um, I'll let you answer and I'm happy to compliment. Uh, but Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, so AI is a big conversation right now. Um, and something that the kind of the developer studio kind of in the back end of building uh, our application is we've been kind of given permission to be able to leverage different AI technology. And so what we have is, for one example, we have a place called the Commons. And the Commons is a peer-to-peer -peer space that you go to outside of class. And surrounded in the Commons, there's some archery and a charades and a Pictionary and all of it is AI generated. And so you can go up and choose your level and it knows the language that you're learning and you can do these activities. It's powered by AI, which does have some natural language processing. It's not to a point where it will replace teachers or it will replace educators and we're firm believers that we're leveraging immersive technology to enhance human connection, not to replace it. Yeah. And that's super, super important, but it's also, it's new. Right? That's never been built before. So the other part that we're doing in collaboration with Meta is researching this. Like, What is, what is the balance of uh, leaning into this new technology of, of AI, of these virtual scenes, of um, live instructor-led classes, and how do we balance that well? And how does it lead to the ultimate um, improved learning outcome and accelerated outcome? And that's part of the research grant that we received from Meta to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. And one more yes, last question, one more question. question and final reflection. <laughs> yes, <laughs> last question. Yes, uh, is it possible to join your gu you guys? Like uh, uh, we have an uh, XR agency and we do a lot of education uh, regarding XR technology yeah. for both creators and marketers. Yeah. But unfortunately, since we're not so big, it's yeah. hard to reach to a lot of people to wider audiences. That is why every time we do it from scratch. Hmm. So, uh, is it possible to join you and how to do it? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, I'll start there, and I think you have a panel right after us, so hopefully people <laughs> will be hearing about your uh, experiences. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 
but very happy to connect. Uh, and if we're not the right team, to connect you with the right people within Meta who can kind of showcase that work, partner together, and really help uh, expand access and uh, show who our audiences are. So yes, very gladly and immerse. Yeah, it could be an interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Case if there are people who are in the language space, we do have people that you know they have to have some previous language teaching uh, experience. But what's really interesting is we're we're finding this new intersection of people that are just in love with immersive technology, like people that I wouldn't have thought like uh, <laughs> originally that are just incredible facilitators. And we have some amazing facilitator training people out here in the house. Um, to be able to uh, upskill people to understand how you can facilitate inside of a virtual space. And some of that's unique to Immerse, but some of that I think is generic across live social experiences in a virtual world. So those are practices we're sharing with Meta and could be you know, gifted or helped with that thought leadership for other people that are using immersive tech for other purposes. And we're on the AWE app. Thank you, Sarah, for facilitating this. Taylor, my colleague, is here, and yes. she is outstanding as well. So let's connect, and thank you for joining our panel. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>